Hello and thank you for joining us. In this video we're going to cover coning and threading of high pressure water jet tubing. At Henco we offer customers coning, threading, and bending as a service when purchasing custom high pressure tubing, which is great but not always a great option for those water jet shops that cannot afford to be down. For these types of water jet operations it is recommended to stock common sizes of tubing and have coning and threading tools readily available. Henco WaterJet offers a variety of options when looking to add coning and threading tools. One of our popular kits is our full tool kit, which includes everything required to cone quarter, three-eighths, and nine-sixteenths. However, our most popular kit is the quarter and three-eighths, as many shops do not use nine-sixteenths. All right, let's take a closer look at the tools. On the left-hand side, you're going to see the coning tool, and on the right-hand side, you're going to see the threading tool. Right, taking a closer look at the coning tool, you're going to see that each coning tool has a main body. Inside the main body, you're going to have a collet and also a cutter tool that actually puts the cone on the tubing. The threading dies are fairly straightforward, come with two handles, a bushing on the one side to center the high pressure tubing uh, to the uh, threading die as seen here. All right, let's jump in and begin to learn how to use these tools. In this video, we're going to produce a 3 8 by 25 inch long nipple. First step is cutting a piece of 3 8 tubing to the proper length. We recommend adding 1 16th of an inch uh, to the overall length to account for material being removed during the coning process. So in this case, we're going to cut a piece to 25 and 1 16th inch. We suggest the use of a band saw style cutting tool versus an abrasive cutoff saw. This way you reduce the amount of heat generated when cutting and this ensures longest tool life. All right, let's jump into the coning tool and we're going to start from the right side. Here on the right side you see the actual cutting tool. In the center is the main body, then the collet, and then the collet nut. All right, to start with we're going to go ahead and put the uh, coning tool inside of a vise on the left hand side. Notice that the coning uh, cutting tool portion of the tool is not threaded in at this stage. And we're going to go ahead and put that piece of tubing through the collet and have it in the middle of the sight hole as seen here. You're going to go ahead and hand tighten the thread. And then we're going to want to grab a one inch wrench and go ahead and tighten down uh, the tubing using the collet and nut. It's important not to over tighten as it will make it easier to remove the tube when you're done uh, coning. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, piece of tubing and uh, the tool that's attached and move it to the right side of the vise as shown here, making sure that the threads uh, that are going to engage with the cutting portion of the tool are sticking out as seen here again. So as you're threading in the cutting tool, you're going to watch uh, through the sight hole and eventually you're going to see that cutting tool start to engage or come close to engaging with the tool, at which point you're going to want to go ahead and grab uh, some cutting fluid, what they call the rapid tap uh, cutting tool. We recommend uh, inserting some through the sight hole, uh, covering the uh, cutting tool and a little bit of the tubing. The way the cutting tool uh, works, as you can see here, is you're slowly turning uh, the thread as you're turning the handle, uh, further engaging the cutting tool with the tubing, eventually cutting the uh, cone and the front face of the uh, tube. And from time to time, uh, folks will need to go ahead and add just a little bit more cutting fluid uh, to make sure that uh, you're prolonging the life of the tool. So one of the uh, more difficult things uh, when using the uh, coning tools to actually understand how many turns does it take or how do I know when I've got uh, the cone done. Um, and you'll be able to t uh, tell this over time. One of the things you're going to be able to look at is the geometry of a cone relative to the um, profile of the coning tool itself. And you can see here we're putting a piece of raw tubing next to the tool and you can see how the angles don't match. Eventually you'll be able to look through the sight glass and see that angle. Here you can actually see uh, if you take off the coning tool itself, the inside uh, of what the tubing looks like. You can see here it's actually a rough face relative to when you take it out and it is complete or the tubing is complete, what a nice finished uh, cone will look like. 
All right, moving along, we're gonna be uh, moving into the threading uh, portion of the coning and threading. As seen here, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and blow out uh, the tool to make sure that any contaminants from previous jobs are not uh, in the uh, tool itself. All right, taking a closer look at the threading tool. Uh, threading tool consists of the body, which has a bushing, and then if we flip it around on the other side, you're gonna go ahead and see the actual threading die. In this case, it's a 3 8 24 uh, left-hand thread. All right, just like the coning tool, uh, with the threading tool, we're gonna go ahead and add some of that rapid tap. Uh, in this case, try to get it on as much of the cutting die uh, as you can. And we're also gonna put a little bit on the actual piece of high pressure tubing itself. All right, to start with, we're gonna go ahead and put the bushing side uh, first, uh, allowing the tubing to go through the bushing and engage with the threading die. Keeping in mind that with the threading die, it is a left hand, which means we are going to move in a uh, counterclockwise fashion. Important footnote, uh, when doing 3 8 tubing, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do 30 half turns. And if you're doing quarter inch, it's actually gonna be 28 half turns. It's gonna be important to keep track of those uh, in order to get the proper uh, amount of threads. As you can see here, uh, there is a little bit of uh, shavings left over uh, that are left in the tool, which is why we always want to clean out that tool. And also on the actual tubing itself, there's going to be some uh, residual metal flakes uh, from the process, which is why we go ahead and use some uh, Scotch-Brite. Just go ahead and clean those threads up. All right, another uh, last step that we do here uh, to clean up the tubing is we like to use a 90 degree countersink bit. You can see the McMaster car part number here. And we go ahead and put that and clean up the ID of the tubing. You can see it puts a nice chamfer there, uh, deburring any sharp edges. All right, so next we're gonna wanna go ahead and take some brake cleaner and a cloth towel and go ahead and clean those uh, threads up, making sure that we get any debris, uh, blowing off uh, any residual brake cleaner and also blowing through the ID to make sure that any contaminants are removed from the tubing. All right, one of the last steps is to go ahead and check our work is we're gonna grab a 3 8 uh, collar here and go ahead and thread it onto our tubing. Uh, and at this stage, we wanna check the quality of our threads, making sure that everything is smooth and uh, ready to put into production. Hey folks, thanks for joining us today. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, please check us out at hencowaterjet.com or get a hold of one of our water jet specialists at 1-833-4-HENCO.